Hello, this is Raul Vargas. Welcome to lesson four of my introduction to programming course. This lesson is called repetition and selection. So this lesson actually has two smaller topics. I am going to, and I'm not going to do an, an assignment per se for this um, exercise, uh, an individual assignment. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two, um, two examples, and I'm going to allow you to complete uh, each example. So the first example will be repetition and the next one will be selection. So I'm going to start it and then you will complete it as your uh, individual assignment. So let's start out with repetition. I think repetition is a little easier. When you hear the word repetition, what do you think? You probably are thinking repeat. So that's exactly what repetition is. It allows you to repeat code, right? If you're going to do the exact same thing over and over again, why have that code you know, why have to copy and paste that code over and over again? You can use something called a loop that allows you to repeat code once, twice, five times, ten times, a hundred times, infinite times. So uh, I'm going to actually, I'll just go with a grass template that works fine for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a, uh, a character do a uh, jumping jack. So I'm actually going to use this character called the coach. I'm going to put him in the world. And I'm just going to use the controls to just kind of put him in our view, get a nice good view of him. I like this character because he, he is kind of in the right position to do a jumping jack. All right. So I'm going to hit done. So remember, this is the design view. This is where you lay out your world. I'm happy with my world. I'm ready to start coding. This is where we do all of our coding. So in the last lesson, we learned linear coding, just dragging methods and putting them in order. Now uh, we're going to use a loop, and it, the loop appears down here. These are control statements. They allow you to control the order in which actions execute. So we want a loop. But, you know, actually, before I grab the loop from here, let's just code the jumping jack. Um, Let's just do. Let's just start coding the jumping jack, and then I'll dra drag the loop in, and I'll show you how you can put code in there. So this is the coach. We want him to do a jumping jack. So we will have his. Let's see. Um, I'll do the arms, and I'll also make him go up, and I'll let you uh, handle the uh, the legs, and maybe have him say something while he does the uh, jumping jack. So his left arm. And his right arm. So uh, let's do left arm. We're going to tell his left arm to roll. And I think it's left. Let's see. Left. Yeah, let's try left. So we'll make his left arm roll left. And quarter revolution is probably too much. I'm going to do 0.15. I'm going to hit play. And that's actually wrong. I wanted it to go up. So let's just go back over here. Instead of roll left, we'll do roll right. We'll hit play, and that's correct. So that makes his arm go up. Now let's make his other arm, his right arm, roll. I think this time it would be left. Left, 0.15. Let's hit play. All right. So one thing that you notice is that he's not doing it at the same time. So there, down here, let's go to the control statements right now. And there is one called a do together. Do togethers allow you to run code at the same time. So let's put the both of those instructions in there. And now he does that at the same time. While he's going up, we will. Um, so while he's moving his arms up, you also want the entire coach to move up. So we do coach move up. And let's move, have him move up half a meter. So let's hit play. All right, so that's one part of the jumping jack. Now, if you just threw the loop in now, so right down here is where loop appears. So we've used the do together. We've used the loop. When we do selection, we'll use the if else. So I'm going to throw the loop in. And let's loop. Let's do five jumping jacks. Loop five times. So I have the loop right here. Whenever you want to loop code, you have to make sure the code is inside of this block. 
So you can look at the color coding to help you figure out if it's inside. You can also just look at the indentation right there. So right there, this is inside the loop. Now this is going to create some weird results, right? You see, he keeps on going up and his arm starts going through his body. That's one thing you have to be careful with loops. You want to make sure that the code, that the position of the object goes back to its original starting spot. So you can copy this or you can do this by hand again, or you can just do the smart thing, grab this entire block and bring it up to this little clipboard and then drag it out of the clipboard. And then you have to be careful where you drop it. You don't want to drop it inside of this do together. That'll just totally mess things up. You want to drop it outside of the first do together, but still inside of the loop. If you're having a hard time placing it in the right spot, you can also drop it outside and then bring it in afterwards. But I'm going to drop it right there, and that's exactly what we want. You notice how these do togethers are at the same indentation level. What that means is that this do together will execute first, and then this do together will execute first, will execute second. So if we hit play now, and actually, we're missing one last spot, one last thing. I copied it. Now you just got to reverse all of the directions, right? When you reverse all of the directions, it'll undo what you just did in the first do together. So we hit play. So we have part of a jumping jack using loops and do togethers. So I want you to code this exactly how I did it right here. And now you're going to add a couple of things. This is your assignment. You're going to add the legs. So right now when he does the jumping jack, only the arms move. I want the legs to also open up. And you'll do that very similar to the arms using the roll method. You just will have to figure out the right direction and also the um, how, how much. So you're going to do the legs. And I also want him to say something at the top of each um, jumping jack. So you, can, you also will put that inside of the do together. So then after you're done, you can just play around. You want it to do it two times, 10 jumping jacks, two jumping jacks, infinite jumping jacks, well, you know. So that is repetition. Now uh, let's start selection. Okay, so now we're going to cover selection. So selection, there's a couple words for selection. Some people call it branching. That one kind of makes more sense because you when you hear the word branching, you kind of think of a road that branches. Um, some people call it conditional execution. That's a little uh, a little fancier, but it's basically the same thing. There's a condition, and depending on the value of that condition, you decide what code you're going to execute. So to do conditional execution, we use something called an if else or an if statement. And, you know, you have to, you have, you actually make these decisions every day, right? Like right now, it's raining out my window. If it's raining, I bring an umbrella. Otherwise, I don't. That's conditional execution. If I'm hungry, I go to the cookie jar. Else, I keep on working. So you have two different possible courses of action. And what decides whether you take one course or the other course is the value of a certain condition. And that condition always has to be something that can be true or false, right? Raining is either true or false. Hungry, it's either true or false. So again, to do this, we use an if statement. The if statements appear down here with the other control statements. We use the loop and we use the do together in the last exercise. So now we're going to use the if all statement. So similar to the last exercise, I'm going to start the project. And I want you to just duplicate it and then add more to it. So you can kind of play around with it a little bit. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a mummy, a world, an Egypt world, where we're going to have a mummy and a pharaoh. And we're going to have one of them say, yay, I'm tall and spin. The one that's going to say that is whoever is taller. Every time you run the program, only one of them will say it. So we're doing an Egypt world. So we're just going to go to our little Egypt folder over here. I'll add a pyramid in the background just to kind of make it a little more interesting to look at. Then I'll add my mummy. And then I'll add my pharaoh. So we have a mummy right here. We have a feral 
over here. Move the ferrule down a little bit. And, and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to hit done. So we are going to drag our if else in here. When you drag the if else, it wants to it wants some value for condition. Just put any value; it doesn't really matter. Um, if you left this alone, if true, basically it's kind of pointless because it, true is always true. So when this condition right here is true, it does what's inside the if part. When this condition is false, it does what's in the else part. But right now we don't have a condition; we just have a value, and you can set it to true or false. But that's pretty pointless because it'll just always do one part of the code and ignore the other. So let's do our condition first. We want to do if mummy is taller than Pharaoh. So in order to do this, we're going to have to use something else that we that we haven't used and that's called a function. So I'm going to go to mummy and then over here under mummy's details, there is something called function. Now functions ask questions of the world and they return a value. So for example, mummy's whiff returns the mummy's whiff. Mummy distance above ground will return the mummy distance above ground. Um, yeah, so you can kind of play around with all of these. They are they're great because they give you exact values. And you know, if you're making the mummy like if you're measuring the mummy's distance to something else, if let's say you decide to change your world around a little bit, if you used mummy distance function instead of you know, putting a har a specific number doesn't matter if you move the object around, your code will still work. So if mummy is taller than Pharaoh, so let's go to let's see. Right here, mummy is taller than Pharaoh. This is a function that returns true or false. If the mummy is taller than whatever object it's being compared to, it's true. If the mummy is not taller, it's false. So we're gonna drag drag this function, and this is really important. You gotta drag the function right on top of the true. You see how it turns green? That means you can drop it right there. Then it wants to know which object is it being compared to, where it's being compared to the pharaoh. If mummy is taller than pharaoh, it'll do this. If the mummy is not taller than the pharaoh, it'll do this. So if the mummy is taller than the pharaoh, we want him to say, yeah, I'm taller. And then we're going to have him spin. So mummy, turn, right, one revolution. Notice nothing happens. What do you think? Why, why, why do you think that is? Well, if the mummy is not taller than the pharaoh, it does what's in the else. What's in the else? Right now it's nothing in the else. So if I wanted some code to run, I would have to resize it. So if I make them a little bit bigger, I hit play. Now all of a sudden the same code actually does something. So we um, so we have the mummy saying, yeah, I'm taller, and we have the mummy spinning. When we make the mummy smaller than the pharaoh, it does nothing. The reason it does nothing is because the else is empty. So I hit play. Now it does nothing. Well, that is going to be your assignment. I want you to fix this code by adding the proper code inside of the else. So inside of the else, I want you to drag the code to make the pharaoh talk and then have the pharaoh spin. And then when you're done, I want you to basically do what I just did and kind of just play around with this, make this bigger. What should happen is when you make one of them larger, his section of code will run. Now it does nothing, but in your version, the, the pharaoh will be speaking and spinning. So that's pretty much it. You know, if also there's a lot of nuances to them. They take some practice, but I think if you have this as your template, it will help you in uh, making future projects. All right. Um, so that's it. So that's um, lesson four. Thank you.